Welcome to Peter and Rafi's football show here on STV. The main talking points on tonight's programme. John Suter is out for the rest of the season with an Achilles injury. Stephen Pearson signs on at Motherwell for a third time. And Mark Robertson says last night's defeat to Hearts was the worst of his reign at Rangers. Yep, Alan Off is alongside me, Peter Martin, and I'm delighted to say, on a Thursday, rather unusually, uh, we have our boot room guest, Hugh McDonald uh, of the Daily Mail. Good to have you with us, Hugh, on the uh, Thursday show. Uh, lots to talk about. Let's cut to the chase, the highs and the lows for Hearts. Um, the low is John Suter out for the season with an Achilles injury, which has been established today, Ruffy. Yeah, it's a disappointing one for the boy. You know, I think we really have to pencil him in for being a Scottish centre-half for the future, uh, maybe a couple of years' time. So it's a wee setback for him. So let's hope he can come back very, very quickly because uh, we desperately need centre-halves. Yep, OK. The highs at 4-1. Um, did you see that coming, Hugh McDonald? No, I, I, I didn't actually. I thought it would be a much tighter game. I, I, I'm, I hadn't been very impressed with Rangers lately, and, and we know there's, the Claxon's been sounding at times. Partick Thistle, uh, Motherwell, uh, on a couple of occasions it's been sounding. But I thought Hearts were in such a, you know, mediocre phase of play and haven't been beaten by Celtic on, on Sunday. I didn't expect them to come out and rout Rangers 4-1. I mean, that was a, that was, and that's what it was. It was a rout. Uh, and I, so I didn't see it coming. And what, what we don't see coming now is like, you know, what's going to happen? That's the story now. Yeah, well, um, Matt Warburton mentioned it was schoolboy errors um, that eventually resulted in a, a, a defeat, such a heavy defeat at that. He says, we've lost 4-1. Uh, we are Rangers uh, Football Club. Well, we don't lose 4-1. Well, um, I don't think they told Hearts that, Ruffy. And the other aspect of this that I think is abundantly clear to many a Rangers fan who's watching that side is the back line needed sorted out. Mm -hmm. It needed sorted out in the summer, didn't do it. And, uh, you know, and it still needs sorted out now. I mean, the first goal was an absolute joke to lose. Yeah, it was, but as you've just said there, and it's been ongoing for the whole season, I think any team that comes up against Rangers will know if they can get at them in the latter mm. third and particularly balls into the box. The two centre-halves don't defend properly all the time. They have mm. lapses, and that's what you're hoping in. And you see the boy Sanderos is sitting on the bench. You know, he was brought in to be the guy with experience, somebody who was going mm. to help them through the season. Uh, and he isn't playing, you know. Mm. And, it, it, and these mistakes keep happening all the time. You would, you would have thought they would have said, OK, let's take one of them out and put Sanderos in with the experience he's got and try and steady the ship. If he's out, long-term mm. injury, fair enough, but he's sitting on the bench. So this is my this is my complaint about the whole situation. It's all right seeing schoolboy defending, etc. It's a one-off. Every team can have that. But if you've got continual examples of schoolboy defending, poor defending, and you're the guy that's not only picked these guys, but has recruited these guys... You know, the, the, the burden of responsibility falls, you know, lies on you. I mean, the point of the matter has been is the recruitment of Rangers has been awful. Yeah. There's not been there's not been a signing there where you could say, stick your son and say, oh, he's been a success. He's been an unreserved success. Can you name one guy? The best player is 37 years old. Yeah. I think the other big problem, um, you know, and, and, and again, you've got to get things in a sense of perspective here. It's a heavy defeat. It's one mm. defeat. The battle is still on for second place. So uh, I agree with you. I think the klaxon has been sounding, mm. Hugh, but the one thing in the background, the more and more it goes on and, you know, if the results, like, for example, March 12th, Ruffy, if they were to lose that game, if they don't win the Scottish Cup, you know, all these things start to gather pace when it gets to season ticket renewal. Mm -hmm. And then the ultimate thing, which is a boardroom, which is very, very quiet at the moment, mm -hmm. suddenly the Rangers fans will start to say, with even mm -hmm. greater voices and greater numbers, what about the money from Dave King? Mm -hmm. What is happening with that board? Is it all about Rangers season ticket money, bailing them out and changing their fortunes? Or is it all about this man who promised them, uh, you know, this magical treasure trove? Yeah, I think, I think in all fairness to the supporters, I think they've been very loyal to the team. Uh, they have put their money up there, you know, and they'll be looking for some kind of uh, payback. You know, payback would be obviously getting into Europe or, or a good Scottish Cup run or maybe getting to the final. But at the end of the day, I mean, Mark Warburton keeps saying, you know, we have to be prudent, which mm. is fair enough. You know, we can't be throwing cash about what we have to be doing is seem to be building for the future. But and I don't get building mm -hmm. to the future when you're bringing in loan players and 
And you've already said you've got an experienced player at the back. The boy Hill is not going to be mm. there for the future. Kenny Miller, in all credit, has been the best player. He's not going to be there for the future. So Rangers, for, as far as I'm concerned, aren't they really moving on to the future? They're just mm. stopgapping, you know, until they get more money. And there's, there's this thing that they say there's no money being spent. And the money's been, there's been a fair chunk of money spent. I mean, much is Sender is on 10, 12 on the bench. I mean, that's, I mean, he, there would be no Hearts players in town. That's three or four Hearts players' wages yeah. uh, sitting on the bench. Well, I'm just going to point out one thing, and I, and I think, uh, again, it's it's forever a criticism sometimes when you see Rangers or Celtic lose a game heavily. Um, you forget about the team who actually won the game. Well, yep. I'm not going to forget about them because, uh, you know, there are. it's only one game. Mm -hmm. It's three games in eight that he's won now, mm -hmm. uh, Ian Cathro, and I, I certainly wouldn't be jumping on any bandwagon mm -hmm. of, uh, of criticism or, or, or plaudits for him. Uh, in equal measure here he's won the game they won it convincingly in the end he deserves a bit of credit for that do you see signs that this is where it's all going to come together from it's a long term project yeah what I see signs of winning and what I'm really surprised about and what I got wrong about this and I'll admit it was I very much felt that Cathro going in there would he'd be under you know very much heavily under Craig Levine and he wouldn't be making very many decisions. And, he, you know, he'd be like the head coach in a, in a foreign sense. Yeah. It seems to me with the signings, they've given them a huge clout. And it seems to me they're Cathro signings, not Levine signings. They're Cathro type players. Yeah. They're not players that you would think Craig Levine was. So he seems to be getting his head here. The only one thing I would say about that, Ruffy, and I agree, I agree with you on that, is because you, you don't bring in two guys who claim to have tactics at the core mm. of their qualities, like uh, Ian Cathro mm. and Austin McPhee, and then mm. suddenly take orders from, from mm. elsewhere as a third party. So I think, you know, he's been given his, he, he's been mm. given his mm. space to develop this side. And again, the jury's still out mm -hmm. till he gets it consistently right. And, he, and to be fair to Ian Cathro, he admitted that last night as well. Yeah, I think the positive thing for the Hearts' uh, point of view is he's acted very quickly. Mm -hmm. You know, he's brought in all these players, a lot of them we don't know a lot about, but certainly mm -hmm. if he continues uh, to get results like that and goes on a wee run, I'm sure, you know, the supporters will get right behind him. And I remember, if it, we've got to give him credit, because if the result had went the other way last night against Cathro, oh. it would have been mayhem in Edinburgh, especially with the Scottish Cup derby coming up. Yeah, absolutely. Um, OK, switch your attentions to uh, the other game at Celtic Park. Um, this one um, paled in, in significance by comparison. It wasn't the same excitement, Hugh, um, uh, but by the same token, Aberdeen deserve credit because of the way they set out their stall, which is to try and stop Celtic at all costs and then maybe nick something. They didn't really threaten Celtic, and in the end, it was an unlikely hero again in Dedrick Boyata. I mean, Beata's, Beata's making a wee habit of this, you know, you know, scoring he did it against St Johnson, of course. Uh, it's, it's interesting, the, the, the theme of, the, uh, of Rogers' reign is, is really interesting, I think, and that... Um, what he's doing, apart from recruiting very well, is he's improving players, you know. Everybody seems to be sprinkling gold. I mean, Bayata was, to many Celtic fans, a bit of a joke. You would see jokes on Twitter about him. Now yeah. they're talking about he's an EPL centre-half. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? He's, he's really improved real individuals in that team. The interesting thing as well, you know, apart from the game, isn't it incredible that we're talking about, we're not talking too much about the game between the uh, two at the top three in the league, you know, I thought that, uh, but the interesting thing is what's happening off at Celtic, you know, the fact that a, a five million offer for a 34 year old goalkeeper that you didn't pick four months ago gets batted away, uh, a 40 goal centre forward is slaughtered in front of a press, filleted in yep. a press conference. I mean, Brendan Rodgers is just really putting down his mark, not only in the team, but in the company, the club as an institution, towards the press. He's, he seems to be the kind of, almost like, he's, he's almost inviolate in what he's doing. Well, I think he's going through what I, I would suggest is the Martin O'Neill uh, first mm. year, Ruffy, where everybody's just cowtailing to everything mm. he says because yeah. it's all positive. Mm. Whatever, he, as you mentioned, he, he does. Uh, seems to go according to plan. They're 25 points clear, and as Brendan yeah. Rodgers mentioned last night in the press conference, you know, I said to him, you know, is this, are you ahead of this grand plan? Mm -hmm. And he says, well, uh, still rankles with me the Inverness results. So you can see the way his mind's working. Yeah. No, I don't think you can, you, there's any, you know, complaint at all in the league. You know, I, I've still said all along, he will be judged in Champions League football, and that'll be coming up again, mm -hmm. and that'll be another judgment that he'll want to put right. 
Okay, um, you can give us uh, your thoughts if you are uh, a fan of the teams involved in those uh, games at the top end of the table last night at Peter and Ruffy on uh, Twitter and Facebook.com forward slash Peter and Ruffy. Give us your thoughts on uh, Rangers' current predicament. Hearts fans, are you a little more heartened uh, by that result last night? And uh, also, uh, we'll hear from Celtic and Aberdeen fans as well and read out a few of your messages after the break. Talk about one of Ruffy's old clubs, the Jags. Welcome back to Peter and Ruffy's football show here on STV. Alan Ruff is alongside me. Peter Martin, our book room guest on this Thursday, is Hugh McDonald of the Daily Mail. Just switching day for us because uh, tomorrow, fingers crossed, we'll have uh, the chief executive of Hibernian Football Club with us here in the studio. Leanne Dempster uh, will come in and chat to us about Hibs. Um, but today, um, one other game last night was Patrick Thistle, Nelson Johnson won. Here's the results from all three fixtures. Um, Thistle losing out to Tommy Wright's St Johnston. Um, and again, St Johnston up there battling with Hearts for uh, fourth place. Here's how the table looks <coughs> at the top end after all those results. And Hearts and St Johnston neck and neck. And then it's, it's the battle for second between Aberdeen and Rangers. And Aberdeen, let's not forget, Hugh McDonald still have a game in hand. Aye, and, and they'll be encouraged uh, greatly by the events of last night. You know, obviously, Derek McInnes wouldn't talk in his post-match press conference about uh, the Rangers result helping them in any way. But I think he was, I think he was heartened by his his team went about their business yesterday. Uh, and that's going to be a race. Uh, that's going to be a race, and it, it's it's going to be a really interesting one because. What's happening now is that everybody's going on about, you know, Warburton says we can't compete with uh, uh, Celtic because of the gulf in, in budget. Well, there's a gulf in budget between him and Aberdeen, so people will be using that to, 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 to almost as a barb towards him as well. So uh, I still think, I think, it'll, I think it'll be close. I still think the Rangers should given the resources finish second in the league. But I think it's a definite race. Yeah, absolutely. At the, at the other end, Ruffy, you know, we're all looking and I think regularly saying you can pick anyone from six who are all battling to avoid either playoff or relegation. Um, Thistle last night had more than a few chances yeah. uh, to finish off St Johnson, And in the end, it was a blunder by Callum Booth that yeah. gifted Saints the point. Yeah, at the fell into the old failing of not mm. scoring goals when you should and then losing them up the other end. That uh, I think Alan Archibald had maybe thought that he'd get out of that mm. scenario. But again, it, it raised its uh, ugly head. But all credit to the goalkeeper, uh, Clark. I thought he had some fantastic mm. saves. You know, But again, it's encouraging. When you're creating chances and not putting them away, that's a disappointing one. But to lose a goal the way they did, you know, it would have just been hard to take. Yeah, if you take uh, Brendan Rodgers completely out of the <coughs> equation, <coughs> um, because if he doesn't win manager of the year with every no. in every category across football writers and, and, and uh, the PFA, uh, I'll be gobsmacked. Um, but as far as the other managers, is there someone else in that division? You know, and I'm and trying to see, I'm, I mean, for me, Tommy Wright's done a great Tommy job Wright. at St. Johnson. Tommy Wright every year is a contender for me. Yeah. So you can measure those, you know, people can, you can almost measure the achievement as, as, as against budget. And he punches a buzz with his way all the time. Uh, there's never a blip, you know, uh, he, there's never a, so if he slips to seventh, one people goes, well, St. Johnston are not in the top six. And then they come again, just well organised, properly run, no shouting and balling any time. I've got no money to spend or in there, no stops to the board. Good disciplined team, good lads. If you know, uh, if you you know you know the personalities has got on board. So yeah, the short answer would be Tommy Wright for me every year. Yeah, okay. Um, a couple of other stories I want to get your thoughts on, lads, before uh, we finish the the, the program. Stephen Pearson uh -huh. is back at Motherwell <coughs> for a third occasion. Um, he actually has won uh, you know a Champions uh, medal for the Indian Super League. Great, uh, hmm. Come back now to Motherwell, and I think he will be a welcome boost for Mark McGee. He's a quality player. I mean, Stevens. Stevens was interrupted with many injuries, but I mean, I, I still remember him galloping mm -hmm. about as a Champions League player with Celtic and a good and a good Celtic scene. Uh, and I mean, obviously went down south as well. So, yep, he'll they'll, uh, they'll look forward to having him back on board. Uh, very technically good. Very you know, very mobile. Very strong. Yep. 
I mean, I take on board what you're saying, Rafi, there are tough games ahead for Motherwell, but I, I just don't see them being involved in anything at the bottom end. No, they did what you said, you know, against Ross County. Mm -hmm. They're capable enough of beating the teams around about them, you know, and it'll be interesting to see how they go on in the next three games. Mm -hmm. But uh, the bottom six, you know, that it just shows you how crucial in every game that comes mm -hmm. up, what three points are going to be, uh, because I don't think... Any of the teams will, will think that they're going to be bottom as they stand and now the way the results are going. Mm -hmm. Yeah, OK. Um, let's uh, pay tribute to one man who's holding up the uh, Championship mm. Manager of the Month award. Neil Lennon gets it for uh, the division because it's been a really... Uh, it's been a, well, it was a good month uh, last month for Hibernian. They just seemed to extend their advantage when everybody thought it was going to be neck and neck. Yep, and they got that very important result, 3 nothing against Dundee United at Easter Road, and you can see the, the dual effect of that. It's, it seems to have halted uh, United in their tracks. Uh, Hibs have gone on for it. I think they're a more resilient team than they were when uh, when Neil, Neil arrived, and I, I think Neil you know, was very concerned about getting a bit of backbone into the team, getting the team ready to grind out results. They've got real quality in that team. You know, you're talking, I mean, McGinn, I think, Shinny, I think, is a great player as well. Mm -hmm. uh, good experience in the likes of Gray. Uh, they should have goals up front. Uh, Cummins, you know, Brian Graham, you know, you can go through it. So they've got, he, he's, built, he's built a team that I think will be promoted. I'm very confident that Hibs will just stretch clear uh, to promotion now. Yeah, and there's no lack of ambition. I mean, they tried on a number of counts, um, Ruffy, to get... Uh, players in, Anthony Stokes, Chris Commons, obviously maybe uh, Leanne Dempster will be able to tell us tomorrow financially uh -huh. or, or maybe it was something else technically that uh, derailed their hopes of even strengthening the side even further but they're unbeaten in eight. Uh -huh. Well the difference is that Hibs, uh, people coming in rather than people going out. You know for a long long time there there was too many players leaving <coughs> and too many players coming in and not hacking it and going. Now Neil's been able to identify players, young players, as mm. you said, with McGinn. You know, he has that knack, uh, as Alan Stubbs did, as leaving Cummins out for a wee while and just letting the young guy realise that, you know, you have to knuckle mm. down and he's getting the benefit of him again. He's made some really good signings. So everything is positive there at Hibs at the moment. Yeah. Uh, were you surprised by uh, Neil Lennon there? Or did, you, did you always feel as if he was going to make an impression? I mean, he was only as good as the players that you're able to get a hold of. I, I've, I've never had uh, any doubts about his quality as a manager. I think in many ways his, um, his managerial career at Celtic was underrated, I think, because, and sometimes through no fault of his own underrated, just because the whole terrible, shameful things that were happening to him uh, in terms of abuse and assault. Uh, and I thought that over because you've got to remember this is a guy, <laughs> this guy beat Barcelona. Now we know that there's a uh, there was a bit of luck on that night, and you'll be the first to admit it, but there was also a very good battle plan that night as well, a very good tactical plan. Yeah. So I had never had doubts about his, uh, his abilities as, as a manager. I thought it is a difficult job he came into because that job is win the division. You know, so that, that would be his that would be his remit, and he's well on the way to doing that. Uh, so good on him. Yep. Okay. Um, uh, under normal circumstances, <coughs> you probably wouldn't actually look at a story like this next one. But uh, the SPFL clubs uh, who have been providing players for the European Championships, they get to share out um, one and a half million um, pounds um, for players that were represented in that tournament. I mean, every little penny helps. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're grasping at straws half the yeah. time, but mm -hmm. every penny helps. Celtic, I think, getting the most of them. Not quite up there with mm -hmm. some of the Italian clubs. I think Juventus mm -hmm. get about three and a half million pounds oh, on their own. Yeah, yeah well, no, it's good for clubs. <coughs> you know, if you're, if you're getting that representation, you know, it's good to get some kind of financial reward as well mm -hmm. because sometimes your player can go away and get injured and you're left without one of your main players. Yeah, OK, I like to pick your brains on other little football issues and this one is, is a classic. Um, Frank Lampard announced his retirement today. Yeah. Where does he rank in your list of special footballers? This is a guy who's won every domestic honour, Champions League and Europa League. I think the only blow on him, and it's a minor, I think it's a significant one, is the, the underachievement of England when they had him, Ferdinand, Gerrard, not achieving well at England. Yeah. But as a club player, I thought it was interesting, I was listening to a, a John Terry interview the other day and he said, he's the best Chelsea player ever. Right? And I immediately bristled and said, I'm going to argue with that. And then I started thinking, <coughs> I went, it's a good show. It's yeah. a good show. I mean, he... 
He's been absolutely outstanding in terms of attitude and absolutely outstanding in the way where he's converted energy and technique into goals as well. Yeah, yeah. I've got to ask you just before we go, and I'm going to get Ruffy briefly on it, but Hugh, uh, older people might think of somebody like Peter Osgood, yeah. uh, but, but but this is a guy who, from midfield, is holds the all-time goal goal-scoring scoring record. Right. That's what, I mean, I, I, I'm over the year where I loved Charlie Cook in a Chelsea shirt, yeah. and I loved, uh, I loved uh, Hudson in it, but Lampard for me. Ruffy? Yeah, I think Gerard and Lampard have just been models of captains, what a mm. captain is in a football team, and I think the two of them have been fantastic. Yeah, that's amazing, actually, and I, and I think Scholes was better than the two of them. Um, nevertheless, it's all about opinions, isn't it? I agree with uh, you. Yeah, do you agree with me? With Scholes, yeah, definitely. Oh, that's why Hugh's on it. That's why Hugh's on it on a Thursday mm. or a Friday, or any day he decides that he wants to come in. It's as simple <laughs> as that. Um, but thanks to Hugh McDonald, uh, thanks to Ruffy. Join us tomorrow. Leanne Dempster, the Chief Executive of Hibernian, will be joining us on the programme at half past six.